All right, down here in Boston, proper Boston, reflecting pool and whatever your garbage is. So going to the epicest of nerdiest of saxophone scenes, mouthpiece day. Oh yeah, just the mouthpieces, baby. Not the horns. We don't need no horns, just, just the mouthpiece is all we're gonna talk about. Anyway, there should be a bunch of vendors there. Uh, Adam Nywood is up to, uh, for uh, to, uh, representing Ted Klum. He's got the, to some Ted Klum pieces. I brought the alto because I'm looking to try the Yardbird. Excuse me. And uh, if it hasn't sold yet, or if there's a few of them, I really like to try the metal one. And uh, who knows what opening it is. See? Nerdy mouthpiece talk already. We haven't even, I'm not even there yet. So I'm going to turn the camera around and just do the walk in and the walk in and scope out shot. And maybe I'll shoot a little video if I end up playing one of those Yardbird pieces. I'm not going to buy one. The rubber is not as expensive, but I think you'd want the brass gold plated one. I think he's getting $6.50 for those. Pricey. So anyway. That's a spicy meat of all. So that's the scene. So I'm gonna turn the camera around, get ready for the big walk-in over here at Virtuosity for Saxophone Mouthpiece Day, I guess. Crazy. Uh, and so we'll hang out. Uh, it's good to see Nywood. Uh, Adam came down to the Monkfish session and played the set with us and we had a good time made the noise, you know? It's good to make the noise. So, as the Christian Science, you know where we are. Proper old Boston as you do. Symphony Hall up that way as you do. Walked by a guy with a Yankees hat on, I said, go Yanks. He said, that's right. So, you know, it's all good. So we'll catch you on the inside. We'll do the walk-in. So here we are, and this is where Rayburn's moved. Rayburn's used to be that way across Mass Ave. If you've never been there, a lot of you know what I'm talking about. And then they were over here on the corner, an old bank. And now we have Virtuosity, which is over here, right here. So this is the spot. We're gonna do the walk in. I can always hear, I can already hear fluttering altos, trying open mouthpieces with two and a half Javas. So we're gonna head in and check it out. You might see some famous faces. Oh no, that's a shame. Yeah, and then I just face the next guy in the corner. Oh, what was that? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Harrington, everybody, one of the greats, one of the greats, and one of my harmony teachers. And as you can tell by the way I play, I failed all of his classes. <laughs> I don't think so. Don't think so. <laughs> all right. Hey guys, Andy here again, the sax geek. I'm here with my Mark Six Alto and the Yardbird. He has two here in the rubber uh, that I'm trying. Um, a six and a five. This is the six. This is a three and a half uh, Java, and it's a pretty interesting piece. Check it out. <laughs> response bright but also a little dark this is a pretty soft read <laughs> So 
So the upper register is a little lacking. Now that could be the reed. I also, I'm not playing a lot of alto these days. Um, so let's hear the same reed with the smaller yard bird, the number five. Now everybody seems to like the five, the smaller one, which this is a little better, but this is, you know, with a four, here's the thing. This isn't a four, it's a three and a half. Now, when I played a five Meyer, for example, I played fours. And uh, now that I'm playing a larger auto link that Adam refaced, Adam refaced for me, I'm playing a three or a three and a half with that mouthpiece. Um, Cause it's a pretty open, it's more open. So uh, the question is if I grab a five in this and then I go to the fours, the mouthpiece is gonna sound different. It's not gonna play the same anyway. So it's really, diff it's just difficult to, to kind of gauge. And here you are buying a mouthpiece. If you buy it, I'm not sure I'm gonna buy it. And so here's the number five. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty rowdy, even the six, the five or the six. I like the five, but this could be like a magic reed and then you get another reed on it and then you hate this mouthpiece you bought. That's the hard part. Let's go to the link for the control. All right, so this is my current alto mouthpiece, which is the Slant Link 4 Adam Nywood refaced to a six, I guess. I actually don't know the opening of this. Uh, and this one's the reason I'm playing softer reeds on this. Uh, here's what it sounds like. <laughs> Way, way darker, obviously, than the, the yard birds. There's so much baffle in them. I mean, it's the flat baffle thing. Let me show you when you get a sec. I don't think of it as being that dark. I feel like I'm able to get some out of it, but compared to those things, this is pretty dark. <laughs> Yeah, 
rowdy. This thing is just like loud. It might be too bright. And I'm comfortable with hard reads. It's not that a four is something I don't play. It's just that who knows how much this is going to sound different with the four. I mean, it's got this nice buttery, soft read kind of, you know, small mouthpiece kind of thing, which is nice on alto. <laughs> the five what are you gonna do man buy the five and get a box of fours and call it a year christ i don't know what to do i guess i'd always send it to ted and have him open it up no i wouldn't do that all right so here, there you go this has been mouthpiece crazy day at the virtuosity in boston thanks everybody thanks uh adam and ted um steven here at the shop um, the Yamaha's guys here, that, that, that new Custom Z is a nice tenor, the dark lacquer one. with the, it's, Those are nice. I played one here before. Um, you know, there you go. So I didn't really talk to the Theo Wani. I don't know. I don't, I don't play contemporary. So there you go. Bebop forever. Anyway, we'll see you later. <laughs>